Hello and welcome to the next episode of Kerbal Space Endeavor. And here we are with some more ridiculous testing where we test this gear thing while we're on the ground. And here we already have successful. We get 320 roots or whatever the cash symbol finally means. And 27 signs for doing this. Great. A real challenge that was. And our second testing goes now. Oh, would you look at that? Test complete, we got some good data from here, thanks. And we get 458 and another 27 science. A very successful mission that didn't take long at all. We didn't even have to leave the launch pad once again. So here we are back on the Surveyor 1, which has been around the planet for 5 days and an hour and some minutes and if we look now at the big map and a normal rectangular view and we can watch it slowly slowly load we can see that the surveyor one has finally discovered or has flown over every piece of land and water on carbon and therefore we now have a complete map of Kerbin. Even though it is at a very low resolution, we at least have a map of some kind. We can see the Kerbal Space Center, which is right around here. We see the server surveyor is one is still going about its business. And I don't know if I should take it down or if I can land it yet or anything. So for now I'm just gonna leave it there in space. However, we have another contract which states um where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Transmit or recover scientific data from space around Kerbin. And because that is really easy, because we can just analyze the data, it gives us 0 0.9 science, but hey, there we go, we have another completed contract. And the contract gives us 30,000 routes just for switching to this and sending data. I guess they didn't really anticipate me having any kind of... Hold on just a second. I actually could try landing this craft because I have parachutes on it. Okay, that's good to know. Let's see if the solar particle collector has anything more to say. Protected by Kerbin's powerful magnetosphere, little but light hydrogen and helium particles are collected. Well, let's transmit this data, even though it isn't worth much, but every little bit helps. Okay, and now it's time to move on to other things. And here we have Kendrin Kerman on board the Tester 1. We have two more contracts I want to fulfill, which is testing something on a suborbital trajectory and one on a just normal orbital trajectory. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's launch. <laughs> And once again, we use the power of fast forward to skip this boring launch sequence. Wait! Oh, we just missed our window of opportunity for the engine test right here. I was looking at the other one earlier. No matter. And here we come with more fast forwarding! And here we go for the testing of the main scene liquid engine. And it is successful. We tested it, we got some good data back. It gives us a whole bunch of money. 300 and wow, and 60 signs. That is ridiculous. That is really ridiculous. And if anybody's wondering why this huge engine is suddenly so small with the mod called... Um, tweak everything or tweakables or I'm not certain it lets you resize things in a certain way and um, yeah I seems to work easily even with the contract system which is I say kind of a cheating and I shouldn't have done that but whatever 
let's get this down oh actually we want to get down over over the Kerbal Space Center so we just get here into the right position start decelerating and then once again we're right there breaking things off losing things and of course things go horribly wrong again oh no 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 why did we have to lose that uh, well I guess not everything can go right well come on you can do it come on there we go and Oh, not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet. There we go. And our parachute opens. We have... The Materials Bay. It does give us something. While flying at Kerbin, let's observe the Mystery Goo. It gives us somewhat science. Let's log the temperature. Ooh, the thermometer is busy right now, but if you'd like to request a temperature reading, please leave a number after the tone. Beep. <laughs> log pressure data. The pressure is lower here than it was at the ground level. Yeah, uh, usually the case when going on higher altitudes. And at least nothing broke off. Well, let's roll a little bit and hold it right there. We can do an EVA and collect more science. But we want to take our helmet off because the breath and breathe the sweet air of your home planet. How about a surface sample? You pick up a small creature with far too many legs. Mission Control denies your request to keep it as a pet. Aww. And... Take pressure data. Take temperature data. And we get back on board. What does our crew report say? Nothing that we haven't seen before. However... We have the temperature scan from Kerbin's Shores, just the right temperature to go for a swim. And log the pressure data, looks like a storm will arrive later, version 0 0.25 maybe? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite interesting, they would introduce weather into the game. So launch uh, windows can be kind of an issue when there's a storm raging on or you have a problem with testing flights and so forth but um, yeah, we'll see how much they're going to implement in the, the final stages of the game however we now have holy 192 science and we have a whole bunch of money and here we are with another rescue mission Mission Control informed us that there is another Kerbal in space. Epri Kerman, which needs some saving. And since we also have a mission that expects us to test something in a suborbital trajectory here, it's a small stack decoupler. We're gonna do this all together. Um. Where's... Oh, we're down there. So, let's get down and over.
Because once again, we're all out of food, electricity, water, everything. Whoa, do, 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 do. A little bit fast right there, buddy. Come here and... Gotcha! And we get on board. And we are a little bit behind the Kerbal Space Center. So we need to go around one more time around the planet until we get into the right position to slow ourselves down once again and get as close as we can to the Kerbal Space Center. We lose some parachutes on the way again, but we already know about that and we lose other bits and parts like always. All right, and here we are with the next big launch we have going. This will be the delivery to the moon to start a satellite network at the moon. Now, let's just launch this. And we have liftoff. Laggy liftoff, though. And here we go. With some post-editing and time acceleration, we skip the boring parts and continue to the more interesting parts. Now we can also get finally reveal what is inside here. There we go. These are the satellites. So we have some RCS on board because otherwise this thing wouldn't steer like yeah, it already doesn't steer properly, so let's get up here, and then we can take a closer look at our satellite system here. Okay, so there's one main drive that will get us to the moon, and then we have four little small satellites that we're going to deploy. And let's extend these panels, actually, so we never have the chance of running out of electricity and then um, just in case we're gonna connect to all the Kerbal's main that comes main set comes set come three there we go and activate just so we never lose connection The next drive is depleted. Let's get rid of it. And accelerate. And lose control. Lose control. Lose control. We don't want that. Stay on course. Now we wait until we hit AppWaps and get into an orbit. And here is post editing me again. Now we're just maneuvering, getting into an orbit, and then trying to plan our way to the moon, messing around with maneuver nodes like all of you know about, and then just accelerating until we get there. Yes, we get there. Sure, let's, let's leave this. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> it looks beautiful. I made a heart! Look at it, it is a heart. <laughs> that would be like the perfect maneuver to pick something up and then come right back around. But we're not going to do that. So let's send this on its merry way towards the moon. So then we just get to the moon and move around with some maneuvers to get ourselves into a nice orbit that has a 250 kilometer apoapse and a 250 kilometer periapse. So we have a complete nice round circle around the moon. And once we finally reached our final position, it was right for the new satellite system. All right, so. Now that all of these here are stable and in the right orbit, we are SATCOM 2 and we're going to direct these satellites here towards 
that com one and activate it. And this one here towards SATCOM 2 and activate it. Because these have a, a shorter range, but it is enough to connect with these satellites over here. So we don't need the big dishes right now. We can save them for later when we need them. So we're going to leave this on active vessel. That is fine. But this one here does not need target and can be deactivated. And just in case, and just to be sure, I'm going to quick save. And also this one here can be deactivated. And here we are. We still have a connection and we're good to go. Now comes the important part and we're going to direct one of these dishes here towards not a specific thing, but we're going to direct it towards the moon. And if I am correct and one of my friends just told me the right thing we should have there we go we have this cone right here that should give us a connection to the moon if we set up the right link now I'm gonna do this with all of these other satellites so I don't need to link every single satellite with every single dish with every single antenna I can just direct them towards each other and then they get the connection as soon as they're in view so as promised, I switched to the other satellites and set them up the same way. So we have uh, all the connections set up properly and we can go back to our Mooner satellite. Okay, and this one will be targeted just towards Kerbin. Activate it. This one will do the same. Are we not running out of electricity? We are losing a little bit of electricity, but I don't care right now. We're gonna target Urban and activate. Just checking. Urban, right. Urban, right. Urban. And the last satellite needs to be predetermined before we go into the separation stage. There we go, let's just check. And you see the cones, they're back going towards Kerbin. Perfectly! Perfectly. And now comes the beauty of this launch. And we have a beautiful separation as they slowly slide by. There we go. And do we have control? We have a control. Let's turn on SAS. Let's turn on SAS. And move away. Wait, maybe? Whoa. Nope. Oh, translation doesn't seem to work. Whatever. It is in position. And away from the others. So. We can extend the photovoltaic panels. I should have put action groups on this probably. That would have been a smart idea and would have looked a lot cooler. Well, we'll know for next time. And we'll switch to this one. Turn on SES. Unfold all of these beautiful, beautiful things. And so we'll do it with this one. And, oh no, oh no, did I turn this on the wrong way and now I can't use the main engine? That would be a real shame. And that's probably what happened. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So this happens when you mess up during construction. This separated into the wrong direction because of the texture reduction mod. I didn't look at the red uh, triangle the right way, and now I might have a problem. Might. But we'll see about that. Okay, all of these are unfolded and ready. Now, we will fix... Uh, which one are we going to fix? First of all... Let's get this here 
out of the way. Very easy, we just set a maneuver to get back to Kerbin. And now we can switch to one of the satellites right here. Um, okay, this one will be renamed. Let's call this Setcom M for June. Or let's actually type this down just in case because we have another M planet in this system and it's called Minmus. And this is Setcom 1. It is a probe. And we don't lose power, we're all good and set. Okay, we are. Time to Apoaps is four minutes, so we're gonna quick save. Wait until we reach Apoaps. Raise our periaps. You want this perfectly stable, and then we're gonna look at the orbital period that we have to sync up all of the other satellites. All right, and we're just gonna fast forward this as well because this took over more than an hour just to get all of these into the right position. So midway into trying to get this into the right position, I realized that I put on the um, control probe uh, bodies the wrong way. So now my nav ball is actually flipped around and I have to um, pretty much fly the wrong direction to actually fly into the right direction. However, we are here working on SETCOM 2, waiting until we hit the right time, trying to get it up to a 250 kilometer apoaps and periaps. Uh, this is where our maneuver kicked in to get the main transport back to its Kerbin, and then it is again a lot more switching around between the satellites. And to get into the right position, I need to go slower than the first satellite, so we raise our apps until we get into the right position, and then I was impatient and I fracked up and I had to reload really quick right here until we get to the right position. And then we just got our apps and periaps onto the right height. And from there on, we just connect the satellites and we're good to go. Now I'm not gonna show you the rest of the moving satellites into the right position because it is rather boring and took a little bit of time and patience. So we'll just jump right ahead until we have the finished up satellite network over the moon. Welcome back. After a lot of fast forwarding, we now got all four satellites into a stable orbit. They are not geosynchronous because that's not possible on the moon. The um, influence of the gravity of the moon is not strong enough so we could get into a geostationary orbit. The geostationary orbit would be like way out here and there's Kerbin which would fuck this whole thing up. So here we are, all these satellites are connected. As you can see we have a wonderful wonderful lines going everywhere. And, second of all, all of these are pointed towards each other and pointed towards Kerbin. Oh no! Tatcom number 5 was not done yet, so we have to do it. And yeah, we have complete coverage over Kerbin. Let's point this towards the moon. And activate. There we go. Now we are all set, prepped, and ready. And yeah, look, it's so beautiful. And as you can see, this one is a little bit off right here, but it doesn't really matter. We have almost perfect coverage. I mean, we have the omnidirectional uh, antennas on here, which go 500 kilometers and we are 250 kilometers over the surface so we would have connection all over here and if we would lose connection for like this tiny little bit right here it wouldn't matter anyway because in within like two minutes later we would have connection again 
So this is like the first setup of a network. I probably later on in the game I will have to change out the um, satellites and change them into new ones or better ones or upgraded version ones. But it doesn't matter. We have complete coverage over the moon and soon we can launch more missions towards the moon. First of all unmanned missions and later on we can finally launch a manned mission to the moon. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was this episode. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more.